Hello everyone. Today, we would like to present to you our project, Machine Learning Based Method for Earthquake Analysis in Japan, a preliminary study. In Japan, earthquake frequently occurs, each time causing devastating damages to human lives and infrastructures. The purpose of this preliminary study is to use like machine learning based method to analyze like the earthquake data in Japan. Our frameworks. We first start by data formatting and visualization. We do a data cleaning and normalization, and we also do a data visualization. Then we move on to the next part, which, which is about earthquake prediction models. We use two of the models. The first one, conventional model, which is known as relative intensity model. And the next one is the one we study and proposed, which is machine learning based models. Data cleaning and data normalization. Each model requires a trained test split, which is different uh, for each model. Uh, the following detail can be read on this slide. Data visualization. This is the result we obtain from doing data visualization. The first one, the image on the left. As you can see, most of the earthquake occur on the Pacific side of the sea. The Pacific side of the sea is closer to a ring of fire, which explains most of the cost of Japan earthquakes. The next picture is the relationship between number of occurrences and year. As you can see, there are some years with really high occurrences, which we can conclude that earthquake require times to accumulate a lot of energy and doesn't happen uh, normally. They just accumulate a lot of energy and happen one as a one big burst. Next is we use uh, gutenberg richer law and analyze the data based on those law. We obtain the following uh, equations. These equations can be used to explain more characteristics of earthquake in Japan too. We use R as well as AI to find out. You can read in-depth explanation on the poster and full paper. First, a brief experience of R I. R I use past earthquakes within a given radius centered on a point to derive the likelihood of the earthquake at the point. For example, to determine the likelihood of an earthquake here, we use all the earthquakes that have occurred within 5 km radius around this point. To explain in detail, first, we divided the earthquake data that occurred so far into try and test data. Next, we determine the study error in Japan, as shown here. Next part is formulation. <laughs> the cumulative value of storing is the sum of the square root of the seismic release energy of all the earthquakes that have occurred within the radius, and the seismic release energy is calculated using e to the power of 5.24 plus 1.44 times m, where m stands for magnitude. The cumulative value of storing is the mean max scale, so the error is a value from 0 to 1. The error is a value from 0 to 1. Then the derived ROI value is used to determine what value of ROI would cause the earthquake. For example, for 0 0.5, earthquakes are more likely to occur, etc. For this calculation, we use the data from tests and we use the PRC score scale to find the best threshold value. PRC scale score is widely used to evaluate, evaluate the performance of the binary classification models. PRC score, score is used to find optimal setting for the ROI model. From the result table, Study area with 10 km spacing. Performance rate is better than study area with 25 km spacing. For machine learning based model, as you can see in the left side, we train this model with optimizer Adam with learning rate equal to 0 0.05. We use mean square error MSE as loss function. We train this model with 8 bats, which each bat has 10,000 data. We train these models 2,000 epochs. Then we plot last function of trend set and validation set. In this slide, we can see the last function graph, and then for testing and evaluation, we use test set to evaluate this model. We got MSE equal to 0 0.394 as the result. From training, we got MSE equal to 0 0.349 for trend set, and MSE equal to 0 0.377 for validation set, which has significance. Conclusion. We can conclude that earthquake in Japan has patterns and can be analyzed using various methods. Second, the validity of machine learning in earthquake prediction. Uh, from our simple and straightforward model, we can regress uh, earthquake data with a significance, which means that uh, there is a promising future in machine learning used to analyze earthquake data. The next one is relative intensity model performance which is a good way of risk assessment and I think the model performed very good. The following are references. And thank you very much to listening to our presentation.